Well, 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 what have we here? A real live quarterback controversy, people. Tom Curran joining us from NBC Sports Boston. Darius Butler will be here. Mark Ingram will stop by to hang out. Alabama won, so he better show up because we have good things to talk about with Mark Ingram. He ditched me last week. Uh, and in what I hope is not going to become any sort of a tradition here on the show, we will go over the deals and steals. We are couponing people on the show. Sorry about my parlay. Is this Bailey Zappi singing, don't worry, be Zappi? No, 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 that would make too much sense, everybody. No, it's Stacy's mom. Little Fountains of Wayne action. A token one-hit wonder right up there with Daniel Powder. Remember that one? Had a bad day. That one was terrible. Gosh, who let the dogs out, which is played in every stadium. And every sporting event, maybe ever, maybe not F1 though. We'll have to ask Darius Butler. I don't know if I don't know if that's making the cut there. Uh, a little Baja men and Lubega, of course, Mambo number five. Some of my favorite one-hit wonders. Hit me up at Up and Adam Show with yours. Uh, Bailey Zappi, Fountains of Wayne. Stacey's mom, I mean, Stacey James is the vice president, the VP of media relations for said Patriots. I bet he is furious at be singing about his family like that. Frankly, I'm offended, but that's not what we're going to talk about. And it does remind me, by the way, remember when the world went crazy at sort of the jump of Instagram or like Instagrammable moments. I remember the check down the NFL uh, handle was obsessed with Drew Locke doing it on the sideline when he was a Bronco, my former Mizzou friend there. He was singing Put On by GZ. Uh, I think they won that game, those Broncos. <laughs> Not the case last night with the Patriots. We will get to Zappy and the Mac Jones drama in a moment, but let us give credit where it is due. Huge step forward. Where's that helmet? There it is. Huge step forward. at a boy, Bears. For Justin Fields, the entire offense there in Chicago, they put together a very impressive performance. Five straight scoring drives on Belichick's defense. They converted 11 times on third down and threw a wet blanket on all of the Pats fans' zappiness. How? By nearly doubling up New England's time of possession in the game. That's impressive. We only saw Bailey Zappi on the field for about 13 minutes. The Bears' drives just sucked the air out of Gillette Stadium. Uh, and so we're going to, I talked to a, a coach I sometimes speak to, of course, that I've you know, put, the, put the dots together, who I said, what, what am I talking about tomorrow? What, what's my story here? And it's, you better give credit to that coaching staff. And I said, F yes, I will. Let's do it. So credit to OC Luke Getze and credit to Chicago for staying in the mix. Listen, they're in this weird purgatory with like 20 teams in the NFL in the NFC, which we love. All right, that's enough love for said Bears fans because... They really will feel themselves and think they're winning the Super Bowl after a win like this, and I'm happy. And these are the type of wins that build momentum, and we love that. we got to get to the Patriot side because that's where the story is as we welcome in uh, a best friend of mine in the sports media world, NBC Sports Boston Patriots Talk podcast host with guests like Matt Castle and Phil Perry, and they were talking about Mac Jones versus Bailey Zappi leading into this game. You can also see him all over NBC Sports Boston, NBCSports.com, a host of Quick Slants, which we do together. And Every Tuesday today at 6 p.m. Eastern. Hey, Tommy. Brendo, what's going on? Uh, what is, what's on your head, sir? It's just a little scally. It's just a little, you know, okay. I got up. It was a late night, it's early cute. morning. Already wrote a column about the spectacle that unfolded. Got to put the quick slants plan together. Podcast. We got a lot going on, so I didn't even shower up yet. And I'm and I'm here. I'm here doing bits about one hit wonders and uh, and Stacy's mom and and bringing Stacy James into it. I'll put it to. You, let's start simply here. What happened last night? My best read on it from the post game, and what Bill Belichick said, and Matt Jones's demeanor. Matt Jones made such a strong case to play that Bill Belichick actually acceded to his wishes, wow. appeased him, put him out there, and said, all right, we'll get you out there, we'll, we'll, we'll play, we'll keep you on a, a short leash, and you'll come out. Because, and the reason I say that is because Mac Jones was so appreciative after the game. He said Bill was very, very good about explaining how things would unfold. Um, Belichick said that it wasn't performance-related, it was injury-related. So all those things, unless they're both lying, which I don't believe to be the case, point to the fact that Mac convinced Bill to use him. And Mike Florio did a little reporting on a 2K saying that mm. Mac had pushed and pushed and pushed. So I think in the end, the spectacle was caused by Bill not just saying, you know what, Mac, why don't you take another week or just going the whole night with Mac Jones? 
Well, it was weird because it, so what was the leash? It was you throw one interception and you hit you hit the bench. I guess that's what it I was. I think it was right? three series. Oh. I think it was going to be three series one way or the other. But that then enters into the question, Kay. Well, what if they had gone up seventeen to nothing? Was he still going to pull him? It's and a, the yeah. fact that he pulls him then invites the Blue Birds at Foxborough Stadium to weigh in on what they think Mac Jones is all about right now, which has to sting and leave a mark, right? Right, and I, you know, I saw you debating it. You had Matt Castle talking very eloquently. He, of course, talked about the balance of what that's like when you have competition there uh, between Mac Jones. Dan Orlovsky, you know, was, is the Mac Jones fan club. Like, let's lean on what this guy did in his in his rookie season. And then, you know, Senator Phil Perry on your Patriots Talk podcast, which everyone should listen to, and I literally listen to it. It's a must. Thank it's you. appointment viewing and listening to me. Uh, you guys brought up the other side going into this. Though it was, seemed unlikely, Phil Perry said... The Julian Edelman of it all. That's a guy who talks to those players, and every player mm -hmm. wants to say, Mac Jones, we, we support him. But he was, you know, Julian Edelman went on Inside the NFL and said, listen, you can't not start Zappy. You can't not get it going. So it's weird that, in my opinion, you know, it, it, just why even start Mac Jones? You're saying he talked, like, Bill Belichick can't be talked into doing something. I, I can't even imagine. It's but very it's weird. weird. It's a weird season. I mean, when you look at the way Bill talked about Mac Jones in July, he said the, dr the dramatic improvement that Mac has made comes after a very good rookie season. He's done everything we wanted. He's better. He's stronger. He's faster. He's done all the things that we needed to. It's been an uh, improvement that was dramatic is how Bill termed it. Make him a captain. Change the offense. Have him dealing with you know a coaching staff that's new and all the things that he's gone through. Injured to, after two of the three games that he started. Part of me wonders if Bill's like, all right, you know what? I'm doing this because he's gone through a lot for us, and I know that he's been yeah. had some bad performances, but he wants to play. It'll look good. It's good leadership. It's good toughness. It illustrates something. And then it blew up in his face. The interesting thing, too, Kay, is did Zappi eliminate himself from the conversation by the end of the night? It's a great question. It's not like it worked out for him. You no. know, before we even get to that and where we go going forward, it's weird that we're seeing, like, you know, it's, I, I, as long as I watch the NFL, it's you put the guy in, you decide to make a change, you're not bringing the other guy back. And now we're seeing right. tenured legacy coaches like Mike Tomlin sort of pick between the two and go back and forth. And now we're seeing it potentially with Bill Belichick. But I thought it was so interesting that Patriot fans, they went nuts, man. They exploded when Zappi came in the game. And it seems like as a bit of an outsider here, though I'm plugged into New England because of you, really, yeah. why does it seem like this fan base has sort of turned on Mac in favor of Zappi? Great question. Because simply he's 2-7 and seven in his last nine starts, and yeah. he's got 10 touchdowns and 11 picks, and some of the picks are mind-bendingly bad. He's had some good performances. When you look at, you know, the performance in the playoffs last year wasn't his fault. But then you see these stray throws from Zappi, as you just showed, to, uh, to Devontae Parker. Yeah. So this throw underneath. Those little throws that seem to be there that Zappi is unearthing. Meanwhile, Mac Jones is out there. And against you know the Baltimore Ravens, he had no touchdowns, three picks. He had a red zone pick. He had a pick against Pittsburgh that was certainly preventable. So I think what has happened is, and there's also, everybody loves the backup, K. Mm -hmm. especially when the starter's not playing up to what you expected. So I think people, they're just not used to the losing. So do something, Bill, is basically the mentality. Do something! But he's still, you know, he's still seen well up there, as he should, best coach of all time. But, like, it's, it's definitely weird in a different year up there. How do you see it playing out? Last one for you. Like, is, is this one of those guys, I mean, is it going to be a roller coaster all year? No, I don't think it will. I think last night they will regret Bill will regret having played a little bit of a rotation. Said he will not platoon quarterbacks in the postgame. My belief is that this week he will go with Mac Jones to start against the New York Jets, and it will be Mac Jones come hell or high water. And that's not because Bailey Zappi can't play, and it's not because Mac Jones has a quarterback position by appointment. It's because that's the simplest, smartest way to gather all your data on whether or not Mac Jones is the quarterback that you want to sail forward with where you have to evaluate the position as to do you need to get somebody else in there. But you need to give him more than three drives. Yeah. And you have to rebuild the team's trust in him now, too. It's so true. Uh, Patriots Talk podcast, Quick Slants tonight. See us both together at 6 p.m. Eastern. I already know what we're going to be talking about. And yes. uh, say hi to Tommy Shelby and the rest of Peaky Blinders for me, okay?
<laughs> uh, Looking Glass, uh, Brandy, <laughs> is my favorite one-hit wonder. I like that. I didn't get to ask Thank you. Me. Tom Curran over with NBC Sports Boston. We love to see that. We also love Darius Butler, who will be here after the break. Catch me and Tom on Quick Slams, which we love. But here's Dar Darius. Where are you? Got a nice music video there, some highlights of this guy's career, because I, I got a bit of a fear here we're going to lose him to F1. We want him to enjoy his F1 fun, but we want him back with the NFL. Let's bring in a guy who's with us every week. He's the co-host of the Man to Man podcast and a regular on the Pat McAfee Show and here part of the Up and Adams family. Darius, I'm a little worried. You should be. You should be, because I had a hell of a time in uh, Austin this weekend. It was great out there for the um, United States Grand Prix out there, the Circuit of Americas. Uh, it was awesome, awesome time. It was a great race. Um, so, yeah, I might be one foot <gasps> in, one foot out. F1, NFL. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. It's close. What was the best part, and have you recovered from said weekend? You look like a 10-year-old. Uh, you look like a 10-year-old in Disneyland. I felt, I felt like a 10-year-old out there. I felt like it. <laughs> this was my second uh, race I actually attended in person. The first one was in Miami. This was the second one. Uh, it was awesome. I, I said my favorite part was probably the pit stops, you know, just being so close to the pit stops and being there. I was lucky enough to be um, in the paddock club. So I was like right above where, where the pit stops come in at and to be able to see, you know, all the people that have to come in and change a tire yeah. or change a front wing in 10 seconds. It was uh, it was wild, man. Didn't been able to see you know Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton, Charles Leclerc, and these guys up close and in, in, in person. Uh, it, it was awesome, awesome experience. Four hundred over four hundred thousand people out there for the weekend, which is uh, amazing. Weather was great, so uh, just an overall awesome experience. I'm gonna have to go with you one of these times. You look like you had an absolute blast. I need to get a to get in on that action. Um, I'm hold you to it. I know, I, and I really do want to go. I'm just, I just don't, we, we need to do something fun. We need a Lewis Hamilton. We need a Max Verstappen. We need something in the NFL to, to, to rein you back, because I can see what's happening here. They're slowly winning you, you over with huge bottles of champagne. We don't have those huge bottles of champagne in the NFL. <laughs> no, nah, you don't have Ferrari bottles of champagne and a podium. We got to, you know, we got to step it up in the NFL. You know, we have, Tom Brady said it a few weeks ago, some bad football, and I feel like yeah. it's just gotten worse for him. You see what's going on with my coats. You're just looking around, and you don't know. Nothing makes sense. The Patriots get blown out last night. Nothing makes sense right now in the NFL. It doesn't. And there's a lot of new names, one of them Ellinger, and we got to talk about it because you, you mentioned it so I can dig right in. Colts lose to the Titans, who are underrated and underappreciated, I think. But Matt Ryan, he's banged up with the shoulder sprain, and Coach Reich announces yesterday that Ryan is donezo. It's Sam Ellinger getting yeah. the start, not just for this week. He put a period on the back of that sentence and said for the rest of the season. What do you make of the move? You know, somewhat surprising. Obviously, Matt Ryan has struggled this year. He's been getting uh, hit. He's been getting peeled up off the turf every week, you know, fumbling, turnovers. It's been ugly. Uh, but, you know, he's a 37-year-old quarterback. So, I mean, I don't, a lot of expectations were very high in Indy for him. We promised him a great running game, a great O-line, and a great defense. The defense is holding up their end of the bargain, but nobody else has kind of really been holding up their end of the bargain um, as far as Matt goes. And then with Frank Wright, you know, this is partly, I think, him covering his own ass, you know, because, <laughs> you know, he, he gets judged off wins and losses. And if you have a quarterback out there, it's not, I uh, help you put that team in a position to win games, which is, you know, taking care of the ball first and foremost, you got to make a move. So fingers across with Sam Ellinger. I uh, don't really know what to expect. You know, half of the fan base is like, okay, we're tanking for whatever it's quarterback in the draft. Yeah. And the other half is like, hey, we've been waiting for this move, you know, for some weeks now. Uh, but it, it, it's a tough move. You never want to change quarterbacks in the middle of the season. But uh, hopefully it's only up from here for Indiana, uh, Indianapolis Colts fans. But what is that? I mean, I was saying Ellinger until you just said Ellinger. So now I'll switch it and I'll start calling him Ellinger. I don't know. See, it's Whoa. these names. F1 got all these European names. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Now we're 
Sam. Uh, All Sam. right, we're going to go Sam. Sammy E. <laughs> Sammy E, we love you. Sammy uh, E. We pulled up this these, the, this sort of bio. We looked up what we could about Sammy E. If we can see that again, I know we showed it. But, uh, you know, in terms of experience, much different than that, Ryan, who has an MVP in this game, right? Sam has three career starts. Yeah. Ryan has 229. So take me inside the locker room there in Indy, one that you know very well. How does this team with this coach and these specific players shift from a veteran leader to essentially a newcomer? Um, everybody's got to got to step your game up. You got to step your game up a little bit more. You know, you got a young guy in there. Uh, the good thing about him is he's a little more mobile. So obviously one of those issues where, you know, the O-line not blocking up in the pass game well. So now you have a guy that can run around a little bit and extend plays. And they've seen him in practice. You know, they've seen him. In, he's had good preseasons. And obviously that's a completely different level from the real thing. Um, the other good thing about it is other opposing defenses don't really have a book on him yet. So he can come out there and just kind of play and let it fly. And, you know, the expectations, it's not like this is the number one pick coming in to play. You know, the expectation just is go out there and do your best. He's going to make mistakes along the way. And as a defense, um, you just want to help him out as much as possible. And our defense has been doing their thing for the most part this yeah. year. Um, so now hopefully the offense just take care of the ball. We can get Jonathan Taylor going, too. This was right. the leading rusher in the league last year. A lot of people had him maybe been in the MVP conversation coming in this year. So let's get 28 going a little bit. And we need, you know, Shaquille Leonard. We've got to get him back. We've got to get such a difference maker when he's out there healthy on the field. He changes the entire complexion of that defense. Uh, I don't know what happens to Matt Ryan. I guess we'll see. You know, I'm Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, these, no, you I'm know, sure. these, these older players. Oh, boy. Um, these other players are leaving. You're, oh, the sun. Uh, talk, yeah. to, talk to me. Let's let's talk about in your division, the Jags. They trade cornerstone running back, a guy who was a top five running back, uh, not long ago, to the Jets last night. So the Jets are sitting there at five and two, right? Yeah. How does this amplify the Jets' chances to sort of make ways? Because they clearly are gunning for the postseason. Yeah. I mean, as they should be. They're, they're surprised that everyone, um, you know, outside of that locker room, you know, the Jets, Giants, but you look at Robert Salah, and, and they were missing their young quarterback to start this year off, and they've been rolling. That defense has been playing really, really uh, well. But they lost two of their best players on offense, you know, Vera Tucker on the offensive line, and Brees Hall, who was a, a, an amazing, explosive running back his rookie year. He was off to a great start, so they lose him. But they're going trade for James Robinson. Um, I think this is a good move for uh, the Jaguars and the Jets because the Jaguars are trying to acquire some more picks. And they have Travis Etienne, who's looked great right. so far this year. So um, this is a good move for the Jets. And they are surprising a lot of people in that AFC East, my Dolphins AFC East. Okay. Um, but they're, they're making waves right now. We love that. We're going to stick with New York and not go down to Miami just yet, Mr. <laughs> F1 World Traveler. But uh, what's going on? Uh, you're talking about it's a good look. It's a good move. Is it a good move for Dable to break out the victory cigar already? Now, they're on fire. They're second in the NFC East. They're 6-1. and one. And this is wow. what I need your comments on. Like, what did you make of this? And the wave. The wave is my favorite part. <laughs> he looks like a politician right now. <laughs> Go like, I, I, yeah, I like it. I love it. You know, every way it's, it's, Look at the it's tough. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I love it. Kissing babies, uh, yeah. struggling up the victory cigar. I mean, it's I love it, man. It, the fan base seems to love him. The locker room loves him. Um, it's it's tough to win in this league. It, it's really tough to win this league, and they're off to a, a hot start, six and one. Another locker room that. No one outside of that locker room expect him to be in this uh, position. So I love this from Brian Dayball. It, it, this fan base has been looking and been thirsty for wins in a physical, you know, uh, team that represents, you know, that area. So I love yeah. it for Dayball. Obviously, early in the season, a lot of ball left. They've been a lot of close games. I think it trailed in five of their games in the fourth quarter, mm. but they're finding ways to win close ones. I love it. I like it, too, because I think, you know, the thing is, the fan base wants it, maybe, but they also are a tough fan base. But the media market is just looking to drown you, right? They're looking to take you yeah. in the deep end and put you underwater. So it sort of opens, you know, anything that opens yourself up to that is tough. But I like that he doesn't oversell it. It's just him. He's not out there, like, high-fiving, and he's not, like, smoking. He's just out there do, shaking hands while he has a cigar. He's not, uh, it's like, he, he's not putting on a show, I guess. Is, I, feel like, I, I feel like, like he's... Been He's been himself, uh, and we've seen this at probably after win three, after win four. I've seen him multiple times in the tunnel, you know, jumping up, and it's looking like they won a playoff game. But, you know, this is his first opportunity as a head coach. 
Um, and it's a lot of, you know, young guys, you know, you got the quarterback, but they didn't pick up his fifth year option. Saquon Barkley, uh, uh, conversations around trading him. Kayvon Thibodeau, was he the right guy to take it uh, five? So many questions, and that team has kind of come together and, and fought. And they, they look like a, they're a tough out week in and week out. So I absolutely love this from their head coach. They are, and FanDuel has odds, of course, on who the coach of the year should be. Salah and Dable in the top three. Who would you pick right now? Ooh. That's tough right now. I, I would have to go Dable. Yeah, me too. I would have to go Dable. I'll give Dable the edge right now because Daniel Jones, he's looking really good right now. Not only does that Saquon in that run game, wink in that defense, but um, he, Daniel Jones has been good, especially on third down right now. So I'll go with Dable. Okay, there's another thing, and everyone can tweet us uh, at Up and Adam Show your thoughts here. This autograph thing, we ha I just have to get your take. I'm not a player. I've been to a ton of games. <laughs> and I know I've never seen this before. Autographs in the tunnel. The league investigating two referees for what looks like them asking and then Mike Evans obliging for his signature post game. Have you ever seen something like this before? I have never seen anything like this before. And, and, and it's so odd that it's, all, it's, it's almost like it can't be what it looks like, right? Yeah. It can't be a ref really running up to Mike Evans, especially after just getting your ass kicked. 21 to three in the tunnel to get an autograph. So it may be with something else, but it looks like an autograph. It looks like a mask for an autograph, but, I, and I know it's against the CBA and against the rules. So I, I doubt the refs would do that, but it just looks really, really odd. Never seen this as a player. Uh, and I, I know his his teammates, his coaches probably walking around like, what the hell is going on right now? So yeah. it was really, really odd. That would be the word that comes to my mind when I saw this video. So, odd. okay, odd, great. And you haven't seen it before, neither have I, but as a player, cause I don't Ever. know. What are what are players told? Like, what were you told about what your relationship should be with referees? Like, do you know that that's a no no? Um, we you don't really get coached up uh, much about interaction with referees. And I played in New England. I was the first team I was a part of, and we were coached up on everything: yeah. on how to interact with media, how to interact with, how to answer questions. You saw the quarterbacks answering questions after the game. Like, I don't know who started. I found out I was starting when when you did, when you guys did. So, um, never been coached up on those interactions. You want to be as nice to the referees as possible. So maybe this is Mike Evans doing that. Maybe. He does get a, he does push off a little bit. So maybe he's buttering him <laughs> up for later. But, later Darius, in the year. but Darius, if you're on the other team and walk out to the tunnel and see this, how do you feel? Like I said, this is something I've never seen before. So maybe, I don't know, maybe his kid is a huge Mike Evans fan. But once again, <laughs> even if you're a ref, right. like, do you have the, the the onions to even walk up to a player after they just lost, you know, yeah. after got upset. They were 13 point favorites and got blown out. And you walk up to a guy in the tunnel to get an autograph. Like I said, it's, it's very odd. Maybe it's more more that'll come out about what was really going yeah. on. Um, but it was definitely interesting. I've seen this video make its waves yeah. uh, around the internet. Uh, well, but you probably do the same thing. Like you see Lewis Hamilton walking down the tunnel. You're chasing him for that autograph, aren't you, Darius? I'm definitely chasing Lewis Hamilton for an autograph. 1,000% I gotta get the GOAT signature at some point. You are an F1 fanboy, it's true. All right, but you're also, you are the steward of Shutdown City. So let's go, take me Ooh. to Shutdown City. Let's go, let's Woo! go. We're starting in Miami. I think we got a safety for the first of time. Javon Holland, superstar safety, made a huge interception uh, late in the game to pretty much seal this victory. I know Noah got one later. But he's the first safety actually to move into Shutdown City. So shout out to him. Oh, and then uh, after Javon Holland, you know, the superstar safety down there in Miami. We're going to stay in the NFC, AFC East, I'm sorry, with the rookie. Sauce Gardner, once again, he's, he's I mean, he's, this is what his third time, maybe. He's been locked down, though. Uh, he's had three, three pass attempts in his directions, forced three incompletions. He's just been locked down. They play a lot of zone coverage, but whenever he's in man to man, he can line up and, and take away any target. And he he's ahead of his game too. He's been on here three, four times in the city. Been a mayor before as well. But the mayor has moved oh, no. to the Big D, to Dallas, to another guy who had a lot of talks about him. Got another pick. Got it. 17 interceptions in his first 35 games. Oof. 
I mean, that is unbelievable. So that's pretty much every other game Trevon Diggs out there in Dallas is getting his hands on the ball and catching it. And he not only is he catching interceptions, but he's locking up receivers as well. Uh, part of, probably the best defense in the league right now. So Trevon Diggs is our mayor to shut down city. So shout out to those guys. Shout out to Trevon Diggs. We love him. Uh, let's do, you know, of course, going to have that board recapping the guys. Did we miss anybody? Did Darius Butler miss anybody as he was Ooh. drinking a size of a bottle, a bottle of champagne the size of me? <laughs> <laughs> Over the weekend, maybe he missed some of the action or it was blurry. You let us know. And before I let you go, I know your parlay didn't hit, my parlay didn't hit. I'm uh, really having like a tough time with this. Like I don't like don't show it. Don't, don't show, even show his, it. Take it down. Take it down. What are we doing? What are Get we doing? Get that off. Get that Oof. out of here. We, we gotta, you know, next play. I'm a Wipe cornerback. It. I'm a defense. I'm a defensive back, K. Still in my heart, so I got a short-term memory. It's next play mentality. I'll be putting together another parlay okay. tonight, probably in the NBA. Is that your advice? Yeah, you got to move on. You know, you got to move on. Um, it's the next play. Uh, obviously, you know, guys, you know, be responsible with your gambling, whatever yeah, you're doing. Yeah, have fun. And, 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 you know, have fun with it. And that's, it, it makes me more engaged in whatever I'm watching. Yeah. And unfortunately, my F1 parlay actually died at turn one. <gasps> the first turn of the race, I saw Carlos Sainz's car go up in smoke with the Ferrari. Is that right? so, well, yeah, you're an it, idiot because you, like, you're mixing both sports. <laughs> like, you're doing too much, Darius. You know it. I hey, looked at you your might, parlay you and was like, what are we doing? You might be on to something, Kay, but I'll keep doing it. We'll see. Well, Whatever. in case, we'll say bye to Darius, but in case I did cost you a couple bucks, which is what, you know, maybe you threw a couple <laughs> bucks my parlay's way. I've got coupons and deals for you guys after this break. Darius, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll talk to you next week. As thank always, you. Mark Ingram is stopping by the show, but check out Darius on his Man to Man podcast uh, on the Pet McAfee show, of course, every week. Look at my purse. Like, why are we showing this? Bailey Zappi couldn't get the win. The Bears beat the New England Patriots. Zappi went in after like th three plays, three drives, three seconds of last night's action. Uh, and he was uh, singing along to Stacey's mom. Of course he was. Uh, Little Fountains of Wayne action. I asked, what is your favorite one hit wonder? <laughs> this is the best. Pat's pulpit saying Jonas Gray. Excellent answer. Jonas Gray, of course, famous for a four touchdown performance up against Indianapolis. I worked there, I think, up in New England at the time. It was 2014. Week 11, and that was a great answer. All right, uh, let's uh, lay out for another guest who never had four touchdowns in a game, but he's my favorite. And he had three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm destined for greatness. That's where to my hobby that lead. I'm up on the scene. I told you I'm up on the scene. Yeah. I'm ready for war. I'm ready for war tonight. I'm ready. The side of the score. The side of the score tonight. We love this man, universally beloved, and always here on the show weekly, unless they lose and they have to fly across the country, which we're going to unfortunately have to get into right now. But we'll have fun as well. Mark Ingram, 12 seasons in the NFL, and we missed you last week. Missed you too, Kay. Uh, we, I, we're going to have fun. You are an absolute superstar. But I do want to talk a little bit about this, because you weren't able to join. Uh, you had to travel because of a loss, all of that, to the Cardinals. You want a championship. I want a championship for you. That's what you've been saying on the show. Like, how are you feeling right now? I think you deserve a championship, um, but you guys are battling right now. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's frustrating to, um, you know, start the season where we have. Um, it's not something that we anticipated or vision, you know, seeing ourselves, uh, you know, when this year started. But the good thing about it is we're a game out of our division, mm -hmm. and um, we have everything ahead of us. We can still turn this thing around. But nobody's going to turn it around for us. We have to do it ourselves. So that's something we have to focus on. And uh, we can't be turning the ball over. We can't be giving up big plays. We have to do well and play complimentary football, offense, defense, special teams. And um, you know, all, all those are things that we have to correct within our own building, with our team, and individually and collectively. So that's what we're aiming to do and get back on track this week. You're a veteran. You're in it. You're removed. You know when it's bad. You know what it takes to be good. Are you, at this point, more optimistic, given what you said? Because you're still in it, or are you more frustrated? I think I'm frustrated and I'm optimistic. But obviously, the frustration is just because we know what type of team we have. We know what we can do. We know what we're capable of being. And we just haven't done that. Um, you know, a lot of self-inflicted wounds, um, a lot of playing the way that we're not accustomed to playing. But uh, I am optimistic because of the guys that we have on the team, the guys that we have in the locker room. 
um, the mindset that we have and how hard we work and how hard we prepare. So I am optimistic and I do believe in what we can do and what we can accomplish going forward. We just have to correct it. And that's all starting on each person individually and uh, as well collectively um, to get going. And that starts today. It started yesterday, but, you know, we'll be back in there tomorrow doing our thing, getting ready for the Raiders. And we love that. And I know you have nothing but respect for Dennis Allen, who you know super well, but I'm seeing a lot of stuff out there. These idiots saying, oh, if Sean was there, these these would be wins. These would be in the win column. So what would your message to that crowd be? Well, I mean, people outside the building don't really matter. Um, they're really not here with us every day. They're not preparing with us every day. Um, and quite frankly, we don't listen to the outside noise. And we don't hear it. You know, um, a lot of people do. and But it really doesn't matter. You know, we believe in Dennis. And Dennis has done a great job preparing us and getting us ready to roll. A lot of the things that we've done to be in the position that we are, have been self-inflicted. Um, myself included, we've had turnovers. Um, and we're last in the league in turnovers. Um, you know, the defense has been giving up uh, big plays and missing tackles. Um, the special teams, you know, we're kind of ranked in the middle of the pack across the league in that matter. And um, every single person on this team, individually and collectively, we have to improve, we have to do better. And yes, we can keep saying that, like, this is what's wrong, this is what's wrong, but we have to change it. Nobody else is going to change it, we have to change it. And so that's what we're focused on doing this week is um, getting back to the basics and making sure that we change these things that are causing us to lose. And you guys are always in it, and you're, you're still in it right now. You said you have the Raiders. We're going to see Jameis, right? Hey, I hope my boy is healthy. I hope he's ready to roll. I know he's been back out there, you know, kind of like an emergency quarterback role suited up. But hopefully Jameis is out there this week for us. Trying to read, I'm trying to read your face. Hey, you, you can't give me, Kay. You can't give me. I need, <laughs> I need him out there. I need him out there. Yep, yep. In the world of these, like these Ellingers and these other quarterbacks that are getting rolled out there, like no, I need my Jameis Winston to go out there yeah. and go off. Um, all right, let's switch gears up to something you're passionate about. Let's have a little fun here. You are, and we love it that you are part owner. Um, and the season's over, but it's a major league soccer team, DC United. So I want to play a game to see if some things that uh, we we play for you here that we cooked up are worthy of getting a red card um, or just a, you know, is it a red card or a yellow card or just a red card? A red or yellow. Red card, you're just missed. You get two yellows, oh. you're out. We're just, I know the rules, Mark. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know okay, what we're okay. doing here. I don't know the rules of the game that we're playing on the show, but let's do this. Uh, okay, so we're going to give it a red card, a card or not a red card. And let us start so with. Give it a red or a yellow or a red or a no red? I think a red or a no red. Okay. Yeah, we're going to see if it's bad and deserves some, you know, red card action or not. I don't need the yellow card. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. All right, I'm going to show you this first. Okay, is this worthy the of a red card? yellow is important because it's mild. You know, and that's what I, it's true. We should have done yellow. Bill's Chiefs game. Josh Allen's trying to avoid the pass rush of Chris Jones. And Jones trips Allen. Does this deserve a red card? No red. No? Why? No red. No red. It's a yellow. It's tripping. Okay, well, I need the yellow card then. It is. It's a yellow. You get two of those yellows, you're ejected. So he has one more warning. One more warning for, <laughs> for you, Josh Allen. All right. Now let's take it to the SEC. Some college action here. Kentucky offensive lineman Manning. He's six foot four, 330 pounds. He takes a slap from a six foot 210 pound Mississippi State safety. Uh, he can't be doing that. He can't be doing that. He can't be doing that. Yeah, red card for flopping. We'll give You're him a red out. card for flopping. Yeah, You're yeah, out. Okay, flopping. we don't flop in the, in excessive, the college. Excessive, excessive, excessive flopping. <laughs> Excessive flopping, Phew, whistle, you're out. I love it. All right, and then during last week, during the Cowboys Lions game, a ref takes a ball to the head, and Jamal <laughs> Jamal Williams hurries to apologize. What do you make of this? Red card, Jamal. Red card, Jamal. He can't be hitting the ref with the ball, man. I mean, he tried to apologize, but look at the other ref. He's like pissed. Look at the other ref. He's like, what are you doing, man? Like, why are you going to throw the ball at him? Look at the other ref when he comes in. Like, How does he hit him right in the head? Bruh, it was an accident. He probably thought he was looking and just tossed him the ball quickly. And, um, yeah, unfortunately... Jamal, you got a red card there, brother. I'm sorry, brother. Well, oh, man. Running back on <laughs> running back, keeping it all the way real. Okay, no touchdown celebrations can be subjective. They're not, you know, red card or yellow cards, but we need your, your I need your judgment. <laughs> judgment hey, I'm here. not giving him a red card because I love the effort. I, I, I love the effort. You know what I mean? It was in his heart, and he did it with confidence. Like I said, we was talking on the show a while ago. 
if you're gonna do your if you're gonna do your dance, if you're gonna do your dance, you gotta do it with confidence. And he wasn't lacking in confidence there, so he was uh, not. Yeah. Uh, quickly, I, uh, Alabama won, right? That's some good good going. I was thought last week I thought you were gonna come on. I have nothing positive to talk to you about Alabama had lost, but they just they're, they're finally riding the ship. Yeah, what what are your thoughts on Alabama? Man, we gotta get going. We gotta get back to playing Alabama football. That's dominating the line of scrimmage. It's not killing yourself with penalties and and big plays. I mean, we allowed one guy to score five TDs versus Tennessee. I, that's beyond me. I've never heard of that. And. Um, <laughs> You know what I mean? So, um, but we got back on track last week. You know what I mean? Doing our, that was a red card. The Tennessee game was a red card, 100%. But uh, we, came, we we bounced back last week against a right opponent and did our thing. So hopefully we're right in the ship, going in the right uh, direction. Coming off the bye, we got LSU. I think we're on a bye this week. We got LSU coming up after the bye. So the the destiny is still in Bama's hands. We can still do everything we want to do. Roll Tide, baby and uh, let's keep it going. We love it. There's other positivity to draw from what's going on. I mean, Carolina just took care of business against Tom Brady, but Christian McCaffrey's no longer haunting defensive coordinators in that division. What do you think the Niners are getting? And this is a, a player that you've seen up close so many times. I mean, Christian McCaffrey is jack of all trades. I mean, running the ball inside, outside, catching the ball, pass protection, a leader. And um, to add him to that 49ers offense, I think that is a headache for everyone in the NFC and everyone in the NFL as well. Um, just, you know, with Debo, Kittle, uh, Juice Check, uh, now McCaffrey, um, all those guys in that offense, I think that's a headache. They were a headache to begin with, but now you add McCaffrey to the mix. I think that's a, that's a problem for everybody. <laughs> and, and quick, I'm not trying to give bulletin board material. You're too much of a veteran to even provide me any, but with Tom Brady, what's, what is going on in your worldview? It's, it's hard to win in this league. And, um, Anybody can be anybody on any given Sunday. So if you're not prepared as as an individual, you're not prepared collectively, um, you can get exposed. And uh, I think, you know, not only Tom, that's been uh, us in the Saints and around the league. If you're not ready to roll, if you're not ready to play, you can get exposed on Sunday because every team's good enough. Every team has the players to beat you. So got to be ready to roll. It's, yeah, you guys got to take care of Josh Jacobs, keep him from scoring touchdowns. This week, you got the Raiders on the docket. Give my love to Devontae yeah. Adams on the other uh, yeah, side. Yeah, I was hyping up Josh Jacobs for every game except for this one. Except for this one. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because you guys are – how do you guys – do you guys not talk to each other that day then? No, we talk. We're already probably going to swap the jerseys out. You know what I mean? I want them to play well, but not well enough to get the win. So <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're the best. Mark Ingram, I'll talk to you soon. Good luck, and hopefully we have positive things to talk about next week. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All right, Mark Ingram. We had Darius Butler on the program. Uh, we still got to do some couponing here on the show. Va I don't think Vons is a national. Vons is a Cali thing, right? Ralph's also a Cali thing. We've got we've got some great stuff for you if you spent a couple bucks on my parlay and loss. I'll after this. <laughs> Starts now. Here we go. Giants on three. One, two, three. Oh, oh, oh. Every day wins make your day so much better. That's why FanDuel Casino has a new daily free-to-play game. It's called Reward Machine. It's a free game giving you the chance to win up to $2,000 in casino bonus every day. All you have to do is log in daily and spin for a free chance at rewards. FanDuel wants you to win. Play Reward Machine for a free chance at every day wins over at FanDuel. Casino. That time of the week, time for a little pick me up. We've got a great group of guys this week uh, that you need to scoop and put into your fantasy lineups or at least have on your bench at the ready. The Chiefs and Chargers on buys this week. So that means, yep, no Mahomes, kind of spooky, no Herbert, no Eckler, no Kelsey. Dante Foreman, guys. Panthers running back. He thrived. 145 total yards against the Bucks on Sunday. It seems like he's going to be the guy for Carolina in the wake of the McCaffrey trade to the Niners. And he's still available in like 60-something percent of leagues. So he should be a top priority. Another running back for you, given buys and injuries and shakeups. Gus Edwards. Listen, Gus made a surprise appearance on Sunday. His first game in nearly two years. Racking up 66 rushing yards and two scores. He's still around. Just hanging around. What did all of you give up that he's available in 90% of leagues come on Dobbins is out at least a month go grab him if you're still competitive in daily fantasy definitely play him over at FanDuel um, quarterback 
I can't quit Daniel Jones. I'm excited. I'm not smoking a cigar in the middle of the day like Dable, but I am picking up my fantasy league because he may not rush for 100 every week, but it's clear he will continue to add value with his legs. He's the second leading rusher among quarterbacks this year, and he's only rostered in like 29% of leagues. Believe in Daniel Jones. Scoop him up. He's a good bye week replacement for the Seahawks, uh, against the Seahawks defense that's been top 10 most generous to quarterbacks and a tight end for good measure. Evan Ingram. Oh, he's probably not having any fun. He was a giant, didn't have any success. Then now he's hanging out with the Jags. But he is doing well fantasy-wise. Eight targets, 60 yards per game over the last three weeks. That is the kind of volume that I'm looking for when I'm looking at streaming tight ends. He's available in 70% of leagues. Go grab him if you are looking for a fill-in for Kelsey. All right, there you go. Pick me up. Daniel Jones, Dante Foreman. We'll talk a little bit about Dante later in the show. Uh, little Panthers love Gus Edwards and Evan Ingram. And up next, right here on Up and Adams, we are flipping the page and putting a spotlight on some player performances from yesterday. And by yesterday, I mean from Sunday that need more love. Here on Up and Adams show, we cover the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, this is good. I'm dancing. Victor Cruz, look out. Uh, I hit on all three of my K makers, all running back edition. Let's go as we welcome in Matt Hamilton because that's the good, and that was very nice and fun, and, and we love it. Uh, hey, thank you for that Peaky Blinders joke. By the way, world, I've never heard of Peaky Blinders. Hamilton literally, t this is the trust I have in Hamilton. I go, I'm blindly trusting you about that joke to Tom Kern, and it killed. You did good. Well, when it comes to making fun of people, you know I'm always, uh, <laughs> you know I'm always on board. <laughs> All right, so you can make fun of me for this, my week seven parlay. <sighs> Second time out the gates. I only got one of three, if we can take a look. Yeah, we shouldn't show Darius Butler, but me you can drag to high heavens, because I'm better <laughs> than this. Mark Andrews, like we could, he couldn't even get a catch on National Tight End Day. Insult to injury. Derrick Henry, how does he like, how does he not score a touchdown hammer? He had a big day on the ground too. It just it just didn't happen for him. I was I was shocked at that one. I thought this was a gimme. We I I, I mean, we were taught we were like cooking it up over with, with our friends at FanDuel, Hamilton and I, and we were like, this is like, you know, this is free money. Like we're we're gonna this isn't this is a I felt really, really good about it, but it's just not that easy. But Darius Butler told yeah. me I just need to shut up and keep going. I love that advice. Um, but did I handle it better? Tell me that. Um, Shut up. No, not at all. Honestly. What do you mean? Um, it was the second quarter, and the voice messages were coming in. That's that's when I know it's bad. Is when it's the voice text because you're so worked up that you can't even type. You just have to, yeah. You just have to. You just have to let all those feelings out uh, through those voice memos. And yeah, once once like three in a row come in, I'm like, oh god, here we go. Yeah, it wasn't good. So we're gonna try to make up for that loss because people probably maybe maybe you were out there and you said, oh, there's the you know the hey K parlay and you spent a few bucks, which is what. Well, we're, we're all having fun. We all want to be vested into the, the early window. I switched the, I mean, I switched the window to try to rub that juju off me and kind of try <laughs> to get a little more action in here. So we, uh, we are going through the papers, and there's some, you know, listen, I'm not going to, don't go to Vons because multi-grain Cheerios being on sale, no one cares. Like, who's, who's eating? Of all of the no. Cheerio rankings, I would think you would agree with me, multi-grain Cheerios are the worst. Those are all the way at the bottom. Yeah. Honey nut, definitely number one. Yeah, OG Cheerios, those fine, those apple cinnamon ones that they have, those are delicious as well. Those are not, that's not going yeah. to cut it. So instead, to sincerely apologize and to make you guys feel better, here's a couple coupons and some deals we found to, you know, make up for what we did. Uh, here's the first one. Let's take a look. Okay, so this is Tums. Listen uneasy feeling in your stomach like I had all Sunday because of the football that I was seeing and the parlay that was not meeting and happening. Uh, you know, if you have a churning sensation, it might not be from losing the parlay. It could be a sign of indigestion. And that's where Tums and Acid Chewable Tablets, ultra strength, peppermint flavor, get this savings, $4.99, $1.50 savings. That's gonna save people money for the parlay. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. I feel like I need some of those too. Uh, if those voice messages start coming in again next Sunday, so. All right, um, all right. Uh, less than a week away from Halloween. How about this? You deserve to get out there, you know, and have a good time. So put your worries behind you. How about this? Get to Party City on sale. You can get a great deal on a cornhole costume. You'll be the life of the party. People will be throwing crap at you all day. <laughs> 
I feel like there's a lot of directions that one can go. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm picturing something from Beavis and Butthead too, but um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one. You think I've watched Beavis and a single second of Beavis and Butthead to know what the <laughs> hell you're talking about? Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> Uh, if you need, that's an awful costume. I, I mean, if you're, if you are dating someone, and they show up wearing that costume, or you run the other way, that is the clear. You say thank you, thank you. I appreciate you showing me the, the kind of human you are. And Marissa's going, it's over. Uh, okay, yeah. so now if you need a hobby, something to take you off your parlay troubles, here you go. I have just a thing for you. It is Michael's. We love Michaels, we love arts and crafts. They have a love wooden- Love Michaels. Yeah, love a Michaels. They have wooden pirate ship birdhouses for $11.99. Listen, there are three sails, as you can see. There's a crow's nest, how about it? You can decorate it any way your heart desires. It's a good deal. Um, yeah, I, I feel like if you lose one more of these parlays, I can see you becoming some sort of unhinged bird lady with like 11 of these in your house, um, you know, and just- <laughs> Birds everywhere. <laughs> You're such a jerk. It's unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> hey, is it Ellinger or Ellinger? Ellinger, right? El Ellinger. Yeah, like yeah. grr, not jer, like jerk, which is what you are. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, all right, we're yep. going to spotlight some performances. <laughs> we love having Matt Hamilton on the show, and of course, we'll have lots to talk about the rest of the week here, but we're going to call it Local Heroes. There's your coupons. You're welcome, but here it goes, and here's some uh, some great plays, some great performances. Hamilton, I like to give love, and these sort of hit me and Hamilton's vein of our friendship for the past six or seven years. How about Justin Houston? The Ravens pass rusher racked up sacks on back-to-back -back plays at the end of the first half, keeping the Browns off the scoreboard. Hamilton, I loved it. What a huge moment. Uh, it ended up being just a three-point win for Baltimore. Four-time Pro Bowler. He missed the previous four weeks. He had a groin injury in the game against the Patriots, and you know, he was shot out of an absolute cannon. He's 33. He's racked up a sack in every full game played this season. And those two monsters moved him ahead of J.J. Watt on the all-time sack list. Ahead of J.J. Watt. And you know what? Justin Houston never gets his credit. Never gets what he fully deserves, and we see him. Never. And I love that one. He's still here year after year. I feel like people wrote him off after the Chiefs caught him when he had a bunch of injuries, but he's come back. It had some big years with the Colts. Now doing it again with the Ravens. I love to see it. Yeah. Do you want to do the I, next one or should I go? I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Um, the other one that I, that I love seeing was Deontay Foreman. I remember being at direct TV with you watching that horrific injury oh. Had this bi big, long run tore his Achilles. Uh, had a touchdown taken away from him on the play. I just remember the heartbreak with that. And it's we saw him have his, a little bit of a resurgence last year with the Titans, filling in for Derrick Henry. Seeing him against the Bucks rack up 145 total yards was just was incredible. So now what happens? It's like he gets to, you know, rewrite something. And uh, I don't know, they're, t they're rushing me off. Are we off the air now? All right. I don't know. Hamilton, I love you, buddy. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hamilton uh, for the A block tomorrow. I said so.